everybody, I'm Matthew Alaria, and you're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we're going to get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we love your Word, and we ask you today for revelation of it. We ask you today for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice, and to see it produce fruit and work in our lives. And Lord, I release my faith today over everybody watching the broadcast. And Lord, I'm asking you today to minister to them in a great and in a mighty way by your spirit through this broadcast. Lord, give them answers to questions and solutions to problems, grace and provision and help for whatever they're facing in their life today. Father, I do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we've been on a series on the broadcast that we're calling Victory Over Fear. And this will be our fourth teaching in this series. And so, friend, if you missed any of the broadcast, again, you can go back to mam.tv. You can go to YouTube or Facebook and catch up with us because the Lord has been really ministering to us on these broadcasts. And I'm telling you, on the last broadcast, we hit something, <laughs> praise God. And so if you haven't watched or you missed some of those broadcasts, make sure that you go back and watch. You will be glad that you did, praise the Lord. Now let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1 again. 2 Timothy chapter 1, and we're going to look there at verse 7. It says there, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Say it with me, friend. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, we found out already on the previous broadcast that fear is not God's will for your life. God does not want you and me living under the thumb of fear. He wants us to be free from fear. Now, on today's broadcast, I want to give you a major key to getting free from fear in your life. Um, go with me to John chapter 14, and let's look there at verse 1. John 14 and verse 1. And we found out on the first teaching in this series that fear is the belief that something bad is going to happen or something bad is likely to happen. And then the accompanying uneasiness of mind and heart that comes with that belief. In other words, whenever you believe something bad is going to happen, what comes along with that is a troubled mind, a troubled heart, uh, an absence of peace, torment comes with that belief that something bad is going to happen. But one of the truths that we laid hold of on the first teaching in this series is that fear is the belief that something bad is going to happen. And then the uneasiness of mind is produced by that belief. And so the uneasiness of heart and mind, the torment, the worry, those kind of things, that actually isn't the fear itself. That's the result of the fear. That's the result of the belief that something bad is going to happen. Um, and so in John 14, 1, Jesus said this. He said, let not your heart be troubled. The word troubled there is talking about agitated, disturbed. Uh, it can also mean don't let it be afraid. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. And so listen to what his response is to us having a troubled heart. He said, you believe in God. You believe also in me. And so the master in that verse is telling us, the way to address a troubled heart, the way to address a fearful heart is by addressing what you believe. Listen to what he said again. Don't let your heart be troubled. Well, what should I do instead, Jesus? You believe in God. 
believe also in me. And so to address fear in your life, you have to address what you believe. Why would that be? Because fear is the belief that something bad's going to happen. And so if you want to get rid of the fear, you have to address that belief that something bad is going to happen. And if you address that belief and change that belief, then you'll get rid of the fear. Now, we saw this with uh, Peter and Jesus when they were both walking on the water that night in uh, Matthew 14. Um, Peter had gotten out of the boat and he was walking on the water to go to Jesus. The scripture said, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. Now, Jesus was on the same water, uh, felt the same wind, and yet he wasn't afraid. What was the difference between Jesus and Peter? The only difference was what they believed. Their circumstances were the same. Their belief was different. And that's why Peter was afraid and Jesus wasn't afraid. Jesus didn't believe anything bad was going to happen. <laughs> and so that's why he had no fear. Peter believed something bad was going to happen. And that's why he was afraid. And the only way to get Peter out of fear is we got to change what he believes. And if, if we can change what he believes, then we can get him out of fear the way the master was out of fear. And so friend, um, when you're talking about walking in victory over fear, you will never get there unless you address what you believe. If you want to walk in victory over fear, you have to address what you are believing. And if you believe that something bad is going to happen to you, uh, or if you believe something bad is likely to happen, you can pray for hours upon end and you can have people lay hands on you. It's nothing's going to change until what you believe changes. You have to change what you believe to get rid of fear because fear is the belief that something bad's going to happen. And then the uneasiness of heart and mind that accompanies that belief. And so you can't just address it on the level of your feelings. Well, I feel afraid. I just wish I could get rid of this uneasiness of heart and mind. And I'm so worried and I'm so anxious and I'm so panicked. I wish I could just get rid of this. The way to get rid of it is to change what you believe. Because the reason you are so uneasy in your mind is because you think something bad might happen or could happen or will happen. And that belief will put you into fear puts you into that uneasiness, that uneasy state. And so the way to address fear, come on, friend, are you listening? Listen closely. If you're going to address fear, you got to address what you believe. Now, um, let's go to Romans 10 and let's look there at verse 17. It says there that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I want you to lay hold of that phrase, faith comes by hearing. Now, in this verse, it's talking about faith or belief in God comes by hearing. And that certainly is true. It's in the Bible. Also, what you'll see is that all belief, good, bad, or indifferent, comes by hearing. The uh, ASV says belief comes by hearing. Faith, the ISV says, faith results from listening. Well, why did Peter believe that something bad was going to happen? He listened to what the devil was telling him through the wind and through the waves. Um, why did the uh, people that were in the boat with Jesus that night uh, when they said, Master, don't you care that we perish? Why were they so afraid? Why did they believe something bad was going to happen? Because they listened to what the devil was telling them through that storm and through that hurricane. And so belief, good or bad, comes by listening. In 1 Samuel 17, when the men of Israel listened to Goliath tell how he was going to defeat them and destroy them, when they listened to that, belief came that something bad was going to happen, and they were afraid. 
And so belief comes by hearing what you feed on, what you focus on, what you listen to. It'll shape what you believe. In fact, let's look at Matthew 14, 29, talking about Peter on the water. It says there in verse 29, when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Verse 30, when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. If you look up that word saw in the Greek, it means when he gazed at, or focused on, or turned his eyes and mind to the wind, that's when the fear came. That's when the belief came that something bad was going to happen. And so you can see that what Peter fed on, what he focused on, what he listened to, uh, created, it shaped his belief that something bad was going to happen. In Romans chapter 14 and verse 18, talking about Abraham, it says this about him in verse 18. It says, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. What that was saying is Abraham had no reason to think that he was ever going to become the father of many nations. No reason in the natural, that is. Um, but with that happening in his life, Abraham expected, he hoped and believed in hope, he expected that he was going to become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be. And he, can, and he being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Now, why was Abraham strong in faith? Because he was holding on to so shall your seed be. God had talked to Abraham and told him, to look at the stars at the, in the sky. And, and the phrase he used was, so shall your seed be. He uh, told Abraham to number the grains of sand on the seashore. And he used that phrase, so shall your seed be. And so Abraham is feeding on, so shall my seed be as the stars of the sky, so shall my seed be as the sand of the seashore. And as he was focusing on that and feeding on that, it shaped his belief and faith came and he wasn't afraid that it wasn't going to happen. He was expecting that it would happen and he was convinced that it would happen and he was strong in faith. And so what you need to lay hold of, friend, is this, to change what you believe you have to change what you're listening to, what you're hearing, what you're feeding on. If you feed on what the devil tells you, it's going to shape your belief and you're going to believe something bad might happen, something bad will happen, something bad could happen, something bad's likely to happen. If you listen to the devil, that's what you will believe and that belief that will produce what you and I know is fear. Fear is that belief. It'll produce that uneasiness of mind, that troubled heart. And so if you listen to what the devil says, it'll shape your belief that way. If you feed on what God says, you'll walk around believing, man, something good's going to happen to me today. <laughs> I serve a good God. He's a good shepherd. He's got a good plan for my life. He does good things. You, you, you'll start, you feed on what God says, and that'll, that'll be the way that your belief goes. And it'll put peace in you, put joy in you. It'll get rid of fear out of you. Praise God. Um, I've shared this, uh, on the broadcast. It's, I think it's been a while since I've shared it on the broadcast. Um, but I did some, uh, felt impressed with the Lord to do some study on this, uh, years ago. And so I went to Google and did some research on how what we hear affects what we believe. And, uh, I was shocked to find out that there had been, there have been studies done. Uh, the first one I believe, uh, was in 1977. And uh, it was a study done at Villanova and Temple University in Philadelphia. And uh, what was going on is they came up with something that they called the illusory effect. Illusory effect. And what they did is they gave uh, these uh, test subjects. 
I believe it was actually college students, they gave them 60 plausible statements. And so 60 statements, they, they weren't outlandish statements, they were statements that could be true. 60 plausible statements, and um, they did this on three different occasions. Now, 20 of the statements stayed on each test all three times. So 60 statements, three different times. 20 of the statements were on the first one, the second one, and the third one. And the students were asked to rate their level of confidence on a scale of one to seven of the truthfulness of the statement. And so they would read a statement. I believe one of the statements was something like the first Air Force base was launched in New Mexico. And the, so the students would read that statement and they would have to say, how confident am I that that is true? And they would have to rate it from one to seven. Now the statements they were given were just general statements that you probably, the, the average person wouldn't know the answers to. And so um, they would uh, rate on a scale one to seven, how true, how confident they were that statement was true. And what they found is that those 20 statements that stayed on the test each time, that the, the confidence that they were true went up each time. And so the more the students read the statements, the more they started to believe that those statements were true. Now the other 40 statements that changed on each test, the results stayed the same. But these 20, when the students read them the first time, they kind of thought, well, maybe that's true. And then they read it the second time and they thought, yeah, I think that probably is true. And then they read it the third time and they thought, yeah, that's definitely true. <laughs> and so what would happen is the more they were exposed to these statements, the more they believed they were true. And this is the illusory effect is what they called it. And the conclusion was that the more you hear something, the more likely you are to believe it's true. And so friend, if, if you want to change what you believe, you have to change what you're hearing. And the more you hear something, the more you'll believe it's true. And so if you listen to the devil sit there and tell you something bad's going to happen, I'm telling you right now, something bad's going to happen in your life, something bad's going to happen to your kids, something bad's going to happen to your family. If you listen to that, you'll start to believe it's true and fear of that bad thing, I'm sorry, belief that that bad thing will happen will put fear in you and it'll rob you of your peace. It'll, it'll produce uneasiness of mind. If you start feeding on what God says and listen to, to what he says over and over and over again, your belief will start to be changed. And you'll start to believe, I tell you right now, God is my shield. He is my security. He is my high tower. He is my good God. Something good's going to happen in my life today. And even if something bad tried to happen, God would shield me from it. He would protect me from it. He would keep me from it. See, when you start feeding on what God says, it's going to shape that kind of belief in you. And of course, that kind of belief will rid you of fear. And this is why um, you see in the Word of God that God instructs us to feed on His Word repetitiously <laughs> over and over again. Let me read you a, a few verses. Proverbs 4.20 says this, My son, attend to my words, incline your ear to my sayings, let them not depart from your eyes. That's over and over and over again. James 1.25 says, Whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein. Again, that's over and over and over again. John 8.31, Jesus said, If you continue in my word. What does that mean? Over and over and over again. God told Joshua in Joshua 1.8, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. That What's that mean? Over and over and over again. And see, friend, when you're battling fear, or fear, it seems like fear's got a hold on you. What's happened is, uh, maybe unbeknownst to you, but by listening to the devil over the years or over the previous months, by listening to him too much, a belief 
has started to be shaped in you. What am I talking about? When you're, when you're being gripped by fear, and it seems like fear is getting the best of you, you have a belief problem. A belief has been formed and been shaped because maybe you've been listening to the devil too much, feeding on what he's telling you, not casting down those thoughts he's given you, but letting those roll over in you over and over again. And over time, a belief starts to get shaped. And see, when you're, when you're being attacked by fear, a lot of times people don't think about what I'm believing. They just think about, I want this fear off of me. It's uncomfortable. It's tormenting me. You have a belief problem. And until you address that belief by changing what you're listening to, you will never get rid of the fear. And so the way to address the fear is change what you're feeding on. Find out what God says about it and feed on it and feed on it and feed on it. And friend, in any area of life where you're battling fear, you need to do this. You need to go to the Word of God, find out what God says about that area and feed on it and feed on it and go over those verses and speak those verses and meditate those verses. And you, you might need to do it two, three, four times a day. I'm feeding on this. I'm feeding on the Word. God is my source. He is my shield. He is my high tower. He is my healer. He is my deliverer. He is my protector. And you feed on these things and feed on these things. And as you do... That belief that was wrong, that something bad was going to happen, that'll start to get shaped the other way. And as what you believe changes, that fear starts to go because you're not believing something bad's going to happen anymore. Praise God. No, you're believing something good's going to happen. And when you do that, that fear begins to go and that peace and joy starts to rise up from within. Praise God. And so if you're dealing with financial fears or fears about sickness and disease or fears about your safety or about your kids, you need to go to the scriptures. Find out what God says about being your financial keeper, your, your healer, your deliverer, whatever it is, and start feeding on these verses. Now, this is so important. Fear is a wrong belief, and that belief uh, has got to be reshaped. It's got to be changed. And it's not always changed overnight. And so when I'm talking about feeding on the word like this, you got to stick with it. You got to stay after it. You know, that wrong belief might have been shaped over months or even over years or over many years. And so when you start feeding on the word and meditating on the word, you can't just quit after a few days. No, you got to stick with it and stick with those verses and, and say them with your mouth and believe them with your heart and meditate on it. And you got to stick with it. And what will happen is by the power of the Holy Ghost, what you believe will change if you'll stick with it. If you'll stick with it, it'll change. But you got to stick with it. You got to stick with it. See, you can't be passive and overcome fear. You got to be active in addressing fear. And I'm telling you something, friend, this is so important. And you need to listen to me here. Just praying to God that your fear will go away. Um, not how this works. It's not how it works. Now, God will help you. He, he, don't misunderstand me. He will help you get free from fear. He will help you. But just saying, God, get these fears off me. Get these fears off me. No, you have responsibility in getting fear off and doing things to getting fear off of you. And God will help you and he'll show you how. But just sitting in, on your couch and feeding on the same lies and thoughts of the devil, well, if you do that, you have a law in motion. Faith comes by hearing. You sit there and listen to the devil. God can get fear off of you today, and you're going to listen to the lies of the devil, and it'll be back on you by tomorrow. And so God's trying to help you get it off you for good. But just laying on the couch and praying, God, get fear off me, get fear off me, I don't want to be afraid. That's not how it's going to work. No, one of the big things you got to do, and we're going to talk about another one next time on the broadcast, but one of the big things you got to do is you got to change what you're feeding on, change what you're listening to, change what you're meditating on. Why? Because that will change what you believe. And what you believe changes, then that fear won't be able to come back because you don't believe like you used to believe. You believe God is your keeper. He is your shield. He is your helper. Praise God. Can you say amen to this? And so when you're battling fear, friend, let me encourage you. Go to the Word. Find out what it says. And I, I'm, 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 I'm looking at you right now through the camera, and I'm just, <laughs> I'm just daring you. 
Go find those verses. Go find them about your kids. Go find them about your life. Go find them about you. Wherever the enemy's trying to put fear in you, you go find those verses. It doesn't have to be a bunch. It can be 20. It can be 10. It can be five. It can be three. It can be one. It doesn't matter. You go find those verses God leads you to. And I dare you, you stick with it. Stick with it and stay with it day after day after day after day. And friend, you will get completely free from fear like that because faith comes by hearing. And if you change what you're listening to, you'll change what you believe. And if you change what you believe and stop believing something bad's gonna happen and start believing something good's gonna happen, you will get free from fear. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we do thank you for helping us to believe right and to stop believing wrong. Help us to reshape our belief. Help us to stop believing something bad's going to happen. Help us to reshape our belief into believing something good's going to happen. And Father, we, I, I thank you. Anybody watching online that's, that's going to go after this and going to go for this, I thank you for showing them the scriptures that they need to be standing on where that fear is concerned. And Father, I thank you for giving them the strength and the grace and the help to stick with feeding on those scriptures until they are completely free from fear. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. Now, don't forget to come back next time because we are going to close out this powerful series entitled Victory Over Fear. We'll see you then. Thank you for watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Go to mam.tv to download the free study notes from today's broadcast. You can also request your free copy of our mini book, Faith Declarations. In this book, you'll find declarations from the Word of God that will feed your faith and help you experience victory in your life. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. In this life, we will encounter challenges, but through the Word of God, we can experience victory over every challenge. In Matthew's book, Victory in Troubled Times, he gives us five keys to experience victory in the midst of adversity. Order your copy today at mam.tv or on Amazon. Today's broadcast was made possible by the partners of Matthew Alaria Ministries and the members of North Smoke Church. Go to mam.tv to become a partner today and help us take the message of faith to this generation.